continue. This is Tom Gilardi. I'm the musical teddy bear, Divine, D V O double N, and we're here with Tom Gilardi in Detroit at the Disc LT. I was in Los Angeles, uh, pardon me, San Diego, working with my uncle. Okay. I finished college, and uh, I think it was September or October, he said to me one morning, he said, you know what, it's time for you to go back home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was almost immediately after I got a call from a friend of mine here in Detroit who said there's going to be an opening at Capitol Records and I think you need to come home and interview for it. Mm -hmm. And I did. And timing in life is generally everything. Right. And I got the job. And I stayed with Capitol from December 57 until 1970. Mm -hmm. uh, and from that point on, I've been on my own. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, over the 12 years I was with Capitol, having worked with a number, obviously, of artists, and publishers and writers who knew me, I was able to get work and never look back. And I uh, had been fortunate enough to work with so many of the great artists in this industry and so many great stories. Uh, Nancy Wilson was uh, a young girl from Chillicothe, Ohio, who came to Detroit to work at Baker's Keyboard Lounge. Mm -hmm. And many years later, <clears throat> she had come in on a later date. And I said to her, Nancy, tomorrow morning, I always saw her on Monday night. I said, tomorrow morning we're doing radio, radio and TV, tomorrow on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But I won't see you at Saturday because I'm getting married. And she came to the wedding unannounced with 500 people and attended the wedding and then went to work that night. Well, you know, and that's just to <laughs> let the artists know that are independent out there, that independence is very important. Extremely. And that's something that I want uh, Mr. Gilardi to explain to a lot of the artists that are coming up that don't really realize the whole with the new digital era Correct. and coming into a no a whole new music business is basically what we're doing but there's still some basic rules that apply absolutely and and there are things that young people who are going to get into the business have to know if you are a writer performer make sure you copyright all your songs mm -hmm. form a publishing company mm -hmm. and keep that as yours because right. otherwise people are going to try to steal stuff mm -hmm. number two don't be concerned about going with a major right from the beginning or anything like that. You hear that, right? You hear do that. Do <laughs> not do that. Today, if you get signed, they want a piece of your publishing, writing, they want a piece of your performances. Pardon the expression, but you're almost a slave to the label again. Mm -hmm. And that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Number three, own your own masters. Make sure you record your own material so you own that master. Mm -hmm. Do not let the label pay for that because you'll never get it back. Never. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> now, with the advent of uh, things that uh, have happened today, like YouTube, you certainly, if you're smart enough and you got a good song, mm -hmm. you can cut a killer video, put that on there, and you never know what might happen. Exactly. Look what happened with that little monster from Canada, Justin mm -hmm. Beaver. Mm -hmm. Do we have to say any more? Exactly. Half hour later, uh, Usher signs him, and 20 minutes later, Justin Timberlake called him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it can happen. Yes, right. So you, you can control your own career, and very frankly, you can go a long way with distribution the way it is today. There's only one major one stop. You can put product out all over the United States, mm -hmm. and you can control your own, your own destiny without ever having to go with a major. Mm -hmm. So don't get concerned whether Oh, I gotta get it. No, the contract is you. If you're strong and good enough, that's right. You can make it as an artist right. without any of that in that situation. And it's so important that you say that the contract is you. A lot of people don't understand that. Uh, and it took me a long time, you know, and until I came to Detroit and actually sat down with you guys and you right. guys actually explained to me what's really going on and moving to Los Angeles, I learned a lot of things, of course, and Naturally. going around the country, but wouldn't you say still there's a grassroots uh, type of way of being able to do retail and, and, and absolutely you know staying in your region and staying you know localizing that's that why important. that's why I'm doing what I'm doing today there's mm -hmm. still a situation here in Detroit where I have represented local artists mm -hmm. and if you can develop enough retail on your own and, and through what I do you can get anybody interested because the one thing that everybody knows in our business mm -hmm. You can't sell a certain amount of product unless the public is out there liking what exactly, they see exactly. and buying it. Supply and demand. Right? has to be. And there's not a label in the business or an individual in the business that won't identify that. If you sell a thousand pieces of product, you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. And the public is reacting to that. Mm -hmm. That never changes. Mm -hmm. We still are song-based in the industry. And if the songs are good enough, good things are going to happen. Well, it was wonderful chopping it up with you as normal, as usual. I tell you, the history of... 
This is like the father of the business here. This <laughs> I'm, one of the, I'm one of the survivors and the few fortunate right, people right, who have enjoyed right. every day I've been in this industry. Right. And there are a lot of people that I know that say, I hate what I do for a living. And I can say, my work has never been my work. It's been my pleasure. And, you, and you, you've you been all the way back to Motown, too. I mean, right from when they started when they here. Started. Greatest 10-year period this city has ever seen in entertainment. There'll never be, in my yeah. estimation, another situation like that. When you think about the amount of writers, performers, artists, uh, musicians mm -hmm. that came through this market mm -hmm. through that period, it's astounding. It is. And England yeah. proves it because every one of those acts today is still a superstar in England. Mm -hmm. What does it tell you about how good that music was? And how well you guys promoted it. And how well we promoted it. And, and right. when you got producers like Holland Dozier Holland, right. you're in good company. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true, very true. All right, it's your boy Dville Double N, the musical teddy bear, with my man, Tom Gilardi. <laughs>
The school is the Recording Institute of Detroit, mm -hmm. and uh, we started way, way back when there were no schools in the state of Michigan. Mm -hmm. It's a licensed trade school, and we teach recording, recording engineering. Uh, we have the music business class and um, music production class. Mm -hmm. So um, we teach a lot of things, you know, related to the music business. Mm -hmm. Um, we teach people how to be recording engineers, how to do better recordings at home, um, and a lot of people apply that same knowledge to live sound sometimes right. when they're out doing live sound gigs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that, that's what we do, and we have uh, two programs. One is an accelerated program where they can just come once a week. Mm -hmm. I think that lasts for like a year and a half, and then we have... Um, uh, a, a program where they can come every day, Monday through Thursday in the morning, mm -hmm. and that program lasts for like three months, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I, have you worked on any major projects as of yet today, you know, like any current things that are out there currently right now? Uh, um, currently, I'm working on mostly local projects right now. I don't mm -hmm. have anything that I know is going to be released by a record company <coughs> yet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have a lot of clients that are just putting their stuff out on YouTube and, and social media and really getting their product out there that way mm -hmm. and um, that's becoming obviously more and more popular as the record companies started tightening their uh, mm -hmm. budgets and, and, and not signing people as often and that kind of stuff. Right, right. So Yeah, so you're not seeing those extraordinary budgets anymore, right? <laughs> no, 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 we, right. we're not, you know, it's just... Uh, there, there's very, very few record company deals being made now, mm -hmm. and a lot of times they'll just wait for people to put it out on the market and see what sticks, and then they pick out the best of those and, and mm -hmm. sign them. Mm -hmm. And that's usually the best way.